is for me to open this webinar about Wikimedia and democracy. Um, this is this is an event we've put together to highlight a, a piece of research that was done recently and talk you through it and have a bit of a discussion. Um, we will have a bit of kind of framing and introduction first, um, then I will talk you through the actual research and at the end uh, there'll be a bit of a um, Q&A between uh, myself and my co-host Sangeet, who we'll be introducing in a, in a second, but it's possible there'll also be time for questions from the audience. Um, have a think about your questions as we talk through the research and um, put them in the chat. There's a few wiki colleagues, um, as you can see, they, they have Wikipedia UK in their name, so they might be able to answer or at least capture them, um, capture the questions so that uh, I can answer them later. Um, we also have um, a friendly space um, officer at the event, that's Stuart. You can see that's highlighted in his name and he's waving right now also. Um, if there's anything you're concerned about, you can uh, perhaps message him on private within um, the Zoom functionality. And I think that's it for our uh, framing. Uh, for the event. So uh, let me introduce myself then. Um, I'm Daria Cebulska, uh, Director of Programs at Wikimedia UK, um, where I've been uh, developing partnerships and programs for the past 10 years or so. Um, I'm also just finishing a secondment at Shila Makechni Foundation, a sort of campaigning and civic space social change organization in the UK. And with me is uh, Sangeet, a Wikimedia UK trustee, who I'll um, pass on to introduce as well. Thank you very much, Daria. So my name's Sangeet Buller, and uh, I'll talk a little bit about my work and how it links to this agenda uh, with Wikimedia UK, where I'm very proud to be a trustee. Um, I set up a nonprofit uh, company called Wise Kids about 21 years ago. Um, and the work of Wise Kids is really around promoting digital literacy, critical thinking, um, also what we would call digital citizenship and also well-being. Um, and the idea being that as the knowledge environment becomes more complicated and the online environment becomes more much richer and diverse and you know truly much more international participation in this space, what are the knowledge um, what what key knowledge and literacies do young people need to thrive online? as well as offline, but equally, um, you know, whether uh, what skills and literacies do professionals need, do families need. And one of the key things um, with being online today is the need to really be able to make sense of the first key thing we call content. We generally tend to talk about content, contact and conduct. And content we know is key and, and good quality content is key, but the ability to really um, interact with that content, to make sense of it, to have reliable, trustworthy content um, are some of the key aspects of work that we cover. So critical thinking, dealing with fake news, misinformation, disinformation, bias, and teaching people to be critical consumers really. Um, and I think in the last, I don't know, seven, eight years, we've seen the growth of populism. We've seen so many different, you know, um, people using and sort of weaponizing, if you like, that social space or social media in many contexts. And so this critical thinking is key. Um, and then the other work is about helping people develop a sense of agency. And, and what that means is really in terms of tackling issues online. So if you're a young person, it is encouraging young people to take action when things go wrong. And that could also be things like looking out for their friends. It could be reporting things that are inappropriate that they've been sent, um, threats, blackmail, you know. And nowadays being online is literally like being in a worldwide city. And so they're going to encounter people, content services that they need to make sense of. Um, and so that really is the second strand of work. 
And then the third strand of work that I'm involved in is around well-being. And that's because how we are and how we see the world as people also affects how we interact. And so if we want to change behavior online. We've also got to recognize that some people are more vulnerable online. We've got to recognize that some people will engage in more risky behavior because there may be a big pull for something that they, they're missing in life. And so not everyone uses the internet in the same way. And so building what we call digital resilience is key, but actually it's also human resilience and human well, well-being because someone who is confident and has good self-esteem is much likely to um, you know, use online more safely than someone who may be more vulnerable who could be exploited. So that's the sort of um, broad overview of the Wise Kids work. Um, where I feel there is a huge intersection in, in my you know, interest with joining Wiki, uh, Wikimedia UK as a trustee is really the work and the projects of Wikimedia UK that promote information literacy. And that's why today I'm delighted to be here to you know, hear Darius uh, share that research. Um, and I think where Wikimedia um, really contributes globally and in the UK is in that knowledge equity space. Getting people to not just um, sort of consume reliable content, but I think one of the bits of Wikimedia's work that I think for me really stands out is also encouraging people to be content creators, partic particularly recognizing people who may be more marginalized, may be underrepresented, and I think there is, for me, a very direct link between knowledge equity, representation, having an online presence with democracy and civic participation. And so really that for me is the segue. Uh, and I'm really grateful for this opportunity to say these few words to you all. And Lucy, you're right. Wise kids should be all grown up. I'm not sure that I can say we are, but... Um, but anyway, it gives me great pleasure to pass over to um, Daria and I think to kick the ball rolling before she presents, um, to maybe just ask Daria if you could give us an overview of where Wikimedia UK currently, um, the work of Wikimedia UK in delivering information literacy. Mm. Yeah, let, let me let me speak to that. Uh, before I do, I'm going to paste the links to the research itself in the chat uh, in case you've heard it all before you can start exploring the research while while I talk and maybe um, Stuart you could take me off spotlight as well then thank you <laughs> um but uh, uh yeah let me let me start with with this um Wikimedia UK kind of similarly as, as have three main strands of of, of work, we work on knowledge equity, climate, and and information literacy. Um, it's all about working with partners and communities to develop uh, digital information or uh, data literacy skills through the medium of Wikimedia. Uh, Wikimedia, and um, this in practice um, looks like a few different things depending on the kind of setting or sector in which we work. Um, there is a Wikimedia in Classroom um, project at universities where we get students to write Wikipedia uh, articles for course credit. Um, then increasingly recently we've been kind of plugging into the existing um, structure of students internships at different universities where maybe it's a longer smaller project where a, a student uh, creates a project with a the aim of developing a few key skills like um, research or collaboration online and they can do that through Wikimedia. Um, then we work with schools as well. Um, this can look like creating content but often it's more about talking to pupils um, about Wikimedia, getting them engaged in kind of critically thinking about Wikipedia and almost as a source of knowledge, almost harnessing uh, some of the reservations or uh, misconceptions about uh, Wikipedia that either them or the teachers have. It, we find that qu uh, like a quite a useful hook into that conversation. 
Um, and then lastly, and, and for me, that's that's quite an interesting uh, area. We also work on information literacy in communities, so outside of formal education, perhaps. And that looks like getting uh, in touch with various community groups, maybe heritage groups, and uh, working, doing workshops with them, teaching uh, people to edit Wikipedia or having um, editing events. And um, through that act of creating knowledge, developing people's um, information literacy skills. Um, I think I will start sharing slides so you can see that summarized as well. So um, bear with me a sec whilst I set that up. And perhaps somebody can tell me whether they can see that and whether is it just my face spotlighted or is it mostly the slides? Yeah, OK, perfect. Um, so here it is uh, summarized in a bit of a different way. So like I said, we, there's a bit of direct delivery when we work on information literacy in various contexts. Then there is also um, work in advocating for the value of, of this work um, in to, to policy makers or, or, or to the education sector. And then lastly, I guess we, we conduct research as well about about our work and, and its impact and its kind of narrative uh, importance, which is, uh, I guess, the main topic of this um, webinar. Now, um, I've already been talking a lot about using things like um, uh, Wikipedia, Wikimedia, and so on. So just in case this is uh, new to people, I wanted to just briefly highlight the Wikimedia ecosystem and just say uh, very broadly what I'm talking about here, Wikipedia, an online collaborative knowledge project um, that, that uh, I hope all of us know. There is also a few other projects in this ecosystem that maybe focus more on data or media. Wikimedia movement, um, and when I say, when I think about, talk really broadly about Wikimedia, that's kind of what I might mean, just broadly Wikimedia is, this is the, the, the movement of the global community of contributors to the various, various Wikimedia projects, both uh, individuals and organized groups across the world. And Wikimedia UK is, is, is one of those organized entities of the movement. Uh, we are a UK registered charity. And um, generally, uh, we work in partnerships with the cultural education sector and, and others to make knowledge really accessible, usable, reusable online, um, either uh, through the partnerships or perhaps training. Now, uh, the research itself, just to give you a bit of context, um, this is a project that uh, myself and a colleague Agnes Brusik did uh, in, we started it in 2021. And um, this was to explore this uh, link between Wikimedia and democracy. Uh, in terms of our methodology, um, there was a lot of desk research exploring various frameworks of literacies and civic skills and seeing how they map onto what we do at Wikimedia. Uh, we did a, a number of one-to-one uh, -one interviews with community leaders that have collaborated with us on Wikimedia projects, editing events. And uh, there's also um, a question in our annual community leader survey or people who engage with us do some volunteering or come to events. Uh, we added a question asking them whether um, their Wikimedia editing translated into activities in the civic space outside of Wikimedia. So that's just how we uh, approach this research. And uh, I'll give you the conclusion of it first. Um, I believe that through that examination of the various uh, frameworks, through the interviews, gathering all of that information, we were able to show that the sort of activities and programs that Wikimedia UK and other Wikimedia um, entities run teach people information literacy. Their, their literacy is increased through being involved in Wikimedia workshop talks uh, training. 
and also uh, that higher information literacy can increase citizen engagement in a democratic process, meaning that there is this strand of um, influence between uh, Wikimedia activities, information literacy, and then uh, strengthen democracy, uh, uh, citizens being more, more engaged in the space. Um, and this was really important for me to, to show. We wanted to have this broad narrative that can be used for, for advocacy, for showing how important Wikimedia UK or globally Wikimedia movement work is, um, uh, to argue for the benefit of digital literacy skills in the time where, as Sangeet was saying, it's crucially important. And um, one of the motivations for doing this work is that we talk a lot about democracy and civic space in our strategy, which I'll uh, show you now because I think it's quite an important framing for all of this um, research. So um, uh, Wikimedia UK's uh, vision, as you can see, is much broader than just more content on Wikipedia or anything like this. It's we are we're looking for a more informed, democratic, and equitable society um, through either sharing more information or getting people more skilled in in engaging with it. And the way that's done is through engaging people with um, open knowledge, increasing the access to information, and crucially, this is all to develop people's uh, understanding of the world and help them make uh, informed decisions. Um, what I find really interesting in our strategic framework is that we make a connection to uh, UN Sustainable Development Goals, especially, and there is some obvious connections just with like access to education, for example, but there is one that really resonates with me is, uh, towards the end um, about uh, building eff effective and accountable institutions at all level. I think that when citizens have more information literacy, they can more effectively hold institutions to account. So that's like another layer of importance of this work, I feel. And uh, just another layer of, of showing kind of the broader framing of this work. This is a quote from our one of our uh, delivery partners um, who is highlighting this kind of broader meaning uh, higher impact of, of the work that, that we do with students. It's um, she, she was highlighting the context of students developing their thinking in uh, geography of knowledge, privilege, um, knowledge equity, and uh, things like that. So um, here is here is the so back to the research from that from that broad framing. Um, so. Um, what I, my point here is that we talk a lot about like democratic participation, understanding of the world, which is really high level. And on the other level, we have um, uh, Wikipedia workshops, trainings, editathons, and so on. How do they connect? Uh, and this is essentially the heart of the of this research and and uh, what I'm going to be talking through uh, now. Uh, so uh, there's two elements of this. One is showing how Wikimedia work uh, links to information literacy, and the other is kind of showing literacy in the context of um, democratic skill. So with this one, um, there's many different frameworks of literacies, uh, different ways that people divide between information, media literacy, and also different types of frameworks of what's within those different literacies. So we're making some simplifications here. The full research, the, the, the long uh, brochure that I linked in the chat, goes into a huge amount of detail and like examining those different frameworks. So this is a bit of a simplification, but we thought it's more important to broadly show the links between our work uh, rather than being super exact about what uh, the different literacies are. Um, but looking at those four areas, um, we think that each of those can be and is addressed when we engage with people, training them to edit or even just to read Wikipedia. 
So with the first one, understanding the content, it's things like evaluating the trustworthiness of information, where it comes from, verifying facts, like finding the original source, for example, thinking about what that source means, fact checking, and all of that are things that we teach uh, people within our information literacy programs, like we would uh, tell uh, pupils in schools, for example, like when they're reading Wikipedia, what to look out for. The applying uh, critical thinking skills, it could be things like detecting bias or evaluating, interpreting or uh, creating, synthesizing, concluding information. And this could be uh, a skill that people use when they write for, for Wikipedia. Um, often, more and more actually recently, we, we run programs that focus on making articles accessible and understandable, especially around like big themes like health or climate. So those sort of skills are important when you try to um, synthesize information and make it more accessible to a general public, for example. The collaborative and group learning skills, hopefully that's uh, quite obvious when we uh, teach people to edit Wikipedia. One of the things that's quite crucial about it is that you edit within a collaborative space. So there is like good and bad that comes with it, but either way, it's about um, editing together. And then the last one, encouraging civic disposition, that's quite a, that's quite a broad theme, but um, it could be things like respecting diversity of opinion or taking responsibility for your actions online. And that again is something that is quite important when you become a Wikimedia editor. And it's something that we would talk people through about like how to behave online and how to respect newcomers or, there's various things that can be discussed here. So as uh, hopefully you can see, the sort of skills or areas that we teach people when we run Wikimedia activities are the key building blo blocks of information literacy, no matter if you're if you're editing or, or if you're a, um, a reader that just builds awareness of how the project works. Uh, so that's the first kind of part of our research. The second one was looking at the framework of uh, civic skills and again how that maps onto um, our work. Uh, so, so here it is, like we were looking at what sort of areas are needed to build an empowered and strong civil society and we think that Wikimedia's work supports this process through those four key areas. Um, the first one, uh, perhaps it's it's obvious, but it's quite a crucial one, providing open and free access to information. Um, this is especially important when we think about um, providing, focusing on, on factual and accurate historical uh, information, which can mean um, that we're trying to redress the imbalance of representation of marginalized groups. And having that sort of openly accessible information, it's really important when, for example, mm, we need to fight media manipulation or misrepresentation of people, that having that information accessible openly, is, it becomes really crucial. The second one we've already talked about, really improving information literacy skills. Um, this, again, can be helpful when we're fighting misinformation, uh, again, kind of pushing against systemic bias, having people less susceptible to that sort of manipulation. And um, I guess through that, being a bit more robust in cultural uh, tolerance and understanding. Uh, the third one, encouraging volunteering. I, I think a good civil society is one where people feel feel um, enabled and encouraged to take action outside of a business or, or the government. And uh, Wikimedia provides a lot of opportunities for people to, to self-organize, to self-represent, build useful skills and kind of become active members of, a, of an online society. 
And then, and then lastly, that's this is a bit of a meta point, I guess, but providing accessible collaborative infrastructure means that um, Wikimedia is built on a system that's uh, openly accessible, the MediaWiki uh, platform. And this means that participants in our projects, either by editing or actually kind of organizing on one of our uh, sort of backend uh, places on Meta, gain direct experience of navigating the kind of processes that take place on Wikimedia, like um, community decision uh, making process, kind of how to navigate self-representation, participation. And so all of those skills, as, as we've discovered, especially through the interviews, um, give people something uh, valuable to use on Wikimedia platforms, but also outside. It, 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 it uh, transpired that those sort of experiences of, of collaborating with people, self-organizing uh, on something can, can be used outside of Wikimedia as well. And all of those things actually are um, relevant to any type of information or any uh, type of a community, but it becomes particularly powerful when we think about um, marginalized or mis uh, underrepresented information because it can give a platform for people to platform for especially people who are minoritized or, or displaced to express and uh, preserve their cultural uh, identity which which is really powerful and something that came through strongly in our interviews. So those two things are, are the key elements of, of what we were able to do in the research. Um, but we end uh, our um, investigation with a number of recommendations, which I'll quickly uh, highlight to you as well before um, for finishing the presentation. So um, there's a number of things that uh, we identified through the research that could be made stronger or improved, both in the sort of general educational policy and through our the work that our partners do on Wikimedia. So uh, there's kind of areas of those. Um, our general recommendations are that the definition of information literacy at the national level promote the importance of um, information literacy for uh, democratic participation, that those definitions make the link between information literacy and an empowered, engaged citizen. Uh, that the that culture of uh, democratic participation is embedded in uh, formal curricula because we saw gaps in, in that inclusion. And that, uh, as an example, activities on Wikimedia could be uh, could be used as a way of, of embedding that, could be, could be the sandbox for, for students to practice demogra uh, democratic participation. And then, and then lastly, I guess uh, we wanted to acknowledge that Wikimedia itself has developed a lot of own understanding about uh, information literacy, sources, um, referencing, reliability, and so on. And so all of that body of knowledge that was developed in the project could be used by, by educators or, or policymakers as well. So those were the broad ones. And then we also uh, had a number of recommendations to organizations that are thinking about running Wikimedia activities. And um, the first one was that um, we were just stressing that organizing Wikimedia activities can be a way to promote civic engagement uh, and that doing so can activate people not just on Wikimedia, but elsewhere as well, which is um, a good thing to uh, promote a, a stronger civil society. Uh, that in doing those sort of projects, um, the organizations could focus on supporting marginalized groups to um, gain the uh, wiki skills and 
use them for uh, self-representation and capturing their heritage um, online. And that uh, kind of alongside that, uh, the partners could run any sort of projects with, with anybody really, but focusing on the fact that being active on Wikimedia could be used for tackling systemic biases that exist on Wikipedia. And through that, having a um, project that can more accurately reflect our society and so be even more useful in the sort of areas that I was talking about. Um, so to conclude this research in, in, a, research in a different way, um, Agnes and I felt that we were able to demonstrate that working on wiki uh, UK projects can facilitate a spirit of working towards a common good, um, collaborating with others, activism, which in the long run empowers and engages society because they um, activate people towards this like uh, general vision and, and, and an important thing that people can uh, gather around. And uh, we feel that this actually doing all of our activities, the workshops, editathons can go quite a long way towards the vision that we have in our minds, which is the a more informed, democratic and equitable society. Um, I will finish me perhaps with, ah, uh, I'm not sure how much this is visible, but it's one of the links that I uh, posted earlier. It's it's a mapping we did as a part of the research showing how the various aspects of civic engagement map onto uh, Wikimedia work as well. And I believe this is it. Uh, that's my email address, um, which I'll try perhaps to copy in the chat as well in a second, because we are now moving on to the Q&A. So that's the slides. For anybody who joined a bit later, I'm pasting the links to the full research and that last diagram with the mapping. Mm. Ah, and I'll uh, I'll copy my email as well in a second. Thank you so much, um, Daria. That was really insightful, and I think unpacking the different elements of how you actually created that information literacy, uh, or how the work of Wikimedia um, does that, as well as you know the links to creating that. Uh, civic engagement really, uh, really important. So I guess one of the, um, I have a couple of questions uh, and then we can go to the floor. Um, what were your key insights from doing this piece of work? And, you know, was there anything that surprised you? Hmm. I, I think um, the one thing that really struck me and uh, and Agnes uh, is that the various that quite a lot of information literacy frameworks didn't take into consideration uh, democratic participation. It was like there's like two separate worlds, and and so a lot of the a lot of the research in our time was spent on teasing out the links and finding. Uh, researchers that have been focused on evidencing that connection so and that's why it's so strong in our recommendations showing the link between information literacy and and, and democratic participation felt quite important and it was surprising to me that it wasn't more obviously shown in existing frameworks so that was definitely one uh, the other thing is that and this is maybe like a slow growing realization that Wikimedia activity has a real life application. Um, I, it's not a closed system. I think for, for a while, um, uh, perhaps myself and maybe others in the movement as well kind of thought about like Wikimedia as our own little world and people come into it to contribute content onto our project. And that's kind of the end goal of it. Whilst actually, Wikimedia is a civic space functioning in the, in the broader world and it has connections and implications uh, to it. And that I think that's quite an important point. 
And then maybe lastly, um, one thing that really struck me, as I said, Agnes and I did uh, interviews with uh, with people, especially with uh, people that would identify as coming from marginalized communities, and they were speaking really powerfully about Wikimedia as a space for representation, especially when contributing to English Wikipedia. I think often we focused on projects, and rightly, I think, um, projects where we maybe work on a language of that marginalized community, but actually they were saying about something valuable about like coming into the main space of, of English Wikipedia as an example, and being able to share their heritage onto that space was really important to them. Thank you. And, and there's such important points there. And I think particularly your first point, just picking up on that, uh, how information literacy work should really tie into that democratic participation. It sort of ties in a little bit to that digital citizenship that is the focus of the wise kids work, because I think we want people to not just be consumers in this ecology of the knowledge, you know, the, the knowledge society as it were, but to be participants to be creators and I think the fact that you've brought that out so clearly that Wikimedia projects are building and encouraging democratic participation is really key. Um, I have one more question, um, bear with me. Um, so can you say a little bit about how you think Wikimedia, the broader movement relates to that civic space and democracy? Mm -hmm. And um, before I do, maybe just one thing that I think it's important to, to mention. I mean, we, we talk about Wikipedia or like Wikimedia projects here as a really positive potential space, but it, it has its shortcomings as well, and it can be a difficult space to engage with, So, which we all recognize. I guess it's just the, the research is focused on its potential, on its positive potential. Um, but thinking Sorry. about um, uh, this uh, broader Wikimedia and, and its relation to civic space, I think I would start by highlighting what you were mentioning in the opening remarks, which is that um, this, this whole thinking about Wikimedia and civic space became more important as as the trend towards a shrinking civil civic space became stronger across across the world, um, there is a lot of um, trends around uh, digital dictatorship, spaces being restricted, internet access being uh, switched off in certain spaces, and so there is fewer and fewer spaces where citizens can get together and practice civic skills like the stuff that we've been highlighting uh, collaboration self-representation working within a context of diversity of opinion which uh, in the era of like filter bubbles and like people being kind of hidden in their own little corners is is really important so um it's i think it's become clearer that wikimedia can be a space can be one of one of the civic spaces can be one of the places that are open, that are um, uh, focused on diversity of opinion and collaborating with others. So it's yeah, it's it's an example of that of that space. And I think well, this is this is really just my perspective, really, of somebody that has been in the movement for for a number of years. And I feel like the, the movement overall has developed and matured its thinking about how it relates to the external world, um, kind of a journey from being, um, I don't know, maybe centered on itself and focused on information generation, content, content generation to seeing itself as embedded in the, in the wider, wider world. Um, so I think that's, that's quite powerful. Um, our um, previous chair of the board was uh, said at some point that 
our like Wikimedia movement story should be everyone's story that we have an opportunity and a duty to use our platform for um, benefit of everybody and so that really resonates with me I think it kind of shows awareness of how what's our place in the in the wider world and how we can maintain being a space for that collaboration which is really important thank you thank you very much daria mm -hmm. um i'd like to invite questions from the floor <coughs> anybody who would like to put a question to daria and if you would maybe you can use the uh, symbols to put your hand up or type the questions in the chat either way. I think Lucy, you're keeping an eye on the chat. Yeah. Um, so a question has come in the chat. I'm happy to read it out loud. Um if if Raya doesn't want, want to do so. So um uh so she says, uh, I think that's a she, sorry. Uh, thanks, Dara, incredibly interesting. I work at gov.uk, which is amazing. That's very cool that you're here. Um, uh, gov.uk is an amazing website. <laughs> I'd like to know your thoughts on how Wikimedia's work relates to the role of the public sector in providing accessible and accurate information to the public. Are there things we can learn from each other or insights to be shared? I have one immediate thing, but I... I wonder if Sangeet has any thoughts also. Indeed, my, my wiki colleagues that are on the call. But one thing that I immediately think about is sharing, um, government sharing uh, data, really broadly construed about anything that can relate to citizen life. And where I think the overlap is, is that if we have... Granted, a lot of that is is already uh, available, but I'm, I'm just thinking broadly. Once we have access to that sort of a data, we could use it in um, running like data literacy workshops for for community groups, for example, or for students who can then uh, engage with this data, manipulate it, maybe share it on Wikimedia or uh, do some sort of um, inquiry or, or research based on that. And it, it reminds me of a program we we ran in uh, in Scotland, where I feel like the as a result of that we are um, helping people be more data literate, which then can make them more empowered. They can examine the data better. They can use it for uh arguing for for benefit in their context i'm thinking about examples around like citizen science science citizen science and maybe doing something around uh pollution or or access to uh, services and things like that that's kind of where i'm initially thinking that there is so our part would be using the content in then building people's skills and making them more confident in using that data in the future, kind of like it's a virtuous circle of empowered citizens. Um, I don't know, Sangeet, if you have thoughts or or um, one of the- Just a brief one. I think that's such a good question. And I think that data, availability of data, and you know that's contributing to, to that open knowledge is, is key. Um, I think, government, uh, you know, the public sector also has a role, I think, just in encouraging education about Wikipedia and Wikimedia projects, because I think a lot of people, if I was to talk about Joe Public in the street, and, you know, I think Daria and Lucy have heard me talk about this before, there's still a lack of awareness of um, Wikimedia UK, Wikimedia projects, Wikimedia, the global movement, and how they all relate. And given that, these projects are essential in terms of um, access to reliable, trustworthy content. I think people in government need to be working more closely to support and develop projects uh, um, personally that empower the everyday citizens. So whether that is staff and, and public servants, or whether that is, you know, Joe Public, where government is providing services to the end user, you know, there may be opportunities using uh, Wikimedia projects as a as, as a sort of bridge. But that's uh, my 
you know, my immediate thought. Would anyone else like to come in? Sarah, you've got a point there. Would you like to come in on that, Sarah? Uh, yeah, I think just the that was really just to 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 mention called the city, um, which is the project that I believe Daria was referring to. Um, we were a, a, a civic civic hacking initiative um, uh, that based up in Aberdeen, um, and with whom we um, with whom we do a lot of work and um, support. They, they tend to do a lot of work around uh, Wikidata and open data and open data sets in particular, and they have done a lot of work around the availability or indeed lack of availability um, of open data um, uh, open data data sets um, being available to the public. So um, yes, I'm sure that would be uh, delighted <laughs> to, to talk to uh, gov.uk if, uh, if that is an option. Um, but certainly one of the comments that they have made and the observations that they've had over the last couple of years and particularly in Scotland, um, is the kind of the, the paucity of um, open data sets um, that are available um, and the lack of them just in, in, in general, in comparison to um, other places uh, in uh, Europe um, and worldwide. Yeah, yes. thank you, Sarah. This was particularly, I think, it came to the fore during during the pandemic where we were discussing some data around um, around that. Uh, I think Stuart, you also had a point. Perhaps you'd like to come in, Stuart, and then Lucy. I mean, yeah, just briefly. I mean, from um, a Wikimedia point of view, we like using publications that um, that organisations like Gov.uk produce as sources. So, the more the more publications and the more detail and the more things on open licences they produce, uh, the the better it reaches the public via projects like Wikipedia. Yeah, really important point. Thank you. Lucy, would you like to come in? Because I totally agree. <laughs> I mean, just briefly, so I, you know, I added that the public sector, and I think Raya has agreed as well, you know, possibly not gov.uk specifically, but obviously the public sector has a very significant role to play in ensuring the development of information literacy skills alongside the provision of accurate information. And um, in, a, in another hat, but still a Wikimedia UK hat, I'm on the executive board of the of MILA, which is the um, Media and Information Literacy Alliance, and advocating for a more coherent approach um, in terms of information uh, literacy, education, and policy is is one of is on our agenda. Um, one of the things I'm so pleased that this that our report, the Dara's report, doesn't do it doesn't it doesn't tie itself into knots trying to define information literacy because. You know, I've been in so many rooms and so many conversations where we're still having that conversation. And actually, fundamentally, I think we do all get what it is, even if um, di different institutions might have a slightly different, um, uh, you know, sort of explanation. Actually, we know what it is. Let's just get on with doing it. Um, I'm and I'm I'm talking on one of the um, uh, Ofcom roadshow panels next week in Belfast on information literacy in the in the community. <clears throat> And again, I'm really, I think we're going to rush past that question and just get on to what's the practice that's happening. And as you say, right, how can we share? Because in a way, we're running to keep up. The information ecosystem is evolving and has evolved so, so quickly. Um, and that, you know, even we all around the, the virtual room who are in this space probably find it hard to keep on top of, you know, new, new, um, new things, um, new initiatives, so that the average person um, just feels totally, totally bamboozled. I had a conversation with one of, our, one of our trustees this morning and he sort of expressed that sentiment. And we, we just really need to think about how we can um, provide that support. As Daria says, it's absolute, it's, you know, it's completely fundamental to our democracy. Sorry, I'll stop that. <laughs> no, I think vital points. So thank you very much. And I see a few more points there in the chat as well that I think Daria, you've responded to. Um, any more questions from the floor to Daria? Please feel free. Anything else that you were wondering about, uh, Sangeet, or any comments from you? Sorry, I don't know if it's just me, but your audio is a little bit soft. Hmm. I, um... I was uh, yeah, I'm wondering. Like, should I shout? Um, I was wondering if if you have any any further comments or or, yeah, or questions. I do. Um, I, so I, if I um could could I actually um, in terms of um 
program design and delivery, you know, what do you feel are the lessons for program design and delivery from this research that maybe can apply more broadly to the Wikimedia movement and, mm. you know, that others can draw on? I mean, I think, uh, I think what's really interesting is how sort of sector agnostic our work in information literacy is often it gravitates towards formal education settings but it doesn't have to be like we can um we've recently done some work in libraries uh, that wasn't about um content as much as it was to develop the participants information literacy skills so there is something about how this work points to um, how various things are connected how information literacy works together with knowledge equity that there is like a broader knowledge ecology of which those different areas are connected cogs so kind of education or culture aren't like separate i don't know strands of work or departments in the in wikimedia that they should be they should be connected and for me that was one of the key things again I, I come back to those interviews where people we were asking them about information literacy but what was coming through a lot was this like marginalization of voices or being able to capture their heritage and gain kind of civic skills through the act of doing that but it wasn't about formal education as such. It was kind of in the connection of this representation, bias of, of information, um, all of it connecting somehow, which uh, when combined, they become really powerful kind of, uh, yeah. So not thinking about them separately, but in combination, I granted that's a bit more complex to, to design, but I think that's where it kind of really comes to its own. Yeah, absolutely. And I like that, you know, because I think where we think about a lot of these things in silos, I think what you're really saying is we've got to respond to need on the ground and look at, you know, the strands that build the information literacy or the civic engagement or the underrepresentation or tackling the bias. Um, and yeah, all those strengths together strengthen civil society. So yeah, uh, you know, really important point. Um, I've got one final question. Um, so if I can put to you, um, where would you like to see this work go, you know, or how would you like to see it evolve, in, in other words, for Wikimedia UK? Yes, I, I think um, a bit like I was framing this, this whole project when I was opening, to an extent, this was addressing a key narrative need that I felt we had as an organization of showing, of, of linking the work we do on the ground with this, this broader um, ambitious vision of an impact that we have of like of the strengthened democratic society. And so in a, in a way, this work kind of comes to its own when we try to um, pitch our work, when we advocate for it. We have that whole list of recommendations that it, some of it is already in the works and we already uh, uh, use it and some of it perhaps we will do more of as, as we kind of um, ingest the research into our our comms. But, but the important thing is for us to kind of continually try to break away from being boxed into being like text on on an on a website which of wikipedia is but but the whole point is that it has this connection to the wider world and that's something that continually we need to remind our uh, funders or potential partners and and so on so th there's an immediate uh use case for for this work for sure and i guess perhaps that links me to like a closing remark that um there was a question i think earlier about like how to use this research and yeah i i think it is something about 
just sharing it with people so that they can use it as an argument for the broader impact of our work. So I I do hope it's useful in a lot of different that people can uh, think about. Um, if if people are interested, I've shared uh, my email a few times in the chat. Perhaps let me do it again. Good. Uh, for anybody that might want to follow up or has thought of a project uh, as a result of this. Um, I think uh, that is it from me. Uh, any closing thoughts from you, Sangeet? No, just a very big thank you. I think, you know, for me, um, this piece of work provides a lot of insights that many others can use to not assume that information leads to, um, you know, democracy and civic engagement automatically, but to take in those extra steps to promote the critical thinking, the participation, address the lack of uh, representation. You know, there are many cogs to building a more equitable, fair society. And I think there are many broad lessons from the work that you've, you know, done in, in this space. And, uh, you know, for me, I hope it will encourage partnership and engagement with you know, all the groups. And I think if all of us can share this work, that will hopefully encourage it. I want to just pass very briefly to Lucy to say, would you, do you have anything else to add, Lucy? Thank you. That's kind, Sangeet. No, really, I'm um, really pleased with today's chat. Um, fantastic to be launching this report. Um, and congratulations to Dara for all the work that she's done on it and building yeah. that, that case for us. Um, and thank you, Sangeet, for co-hosting and, and um, uh, sharing your wisdom with us today as well. Appreciate that. A pleasure. So that brings us to the end. If uh, anyone has any questions, Darius' email address is there. Um, I'm happy to add mine if anyone wants. Um, and yeah, I think otherwise, please feel free to get in touch if anyone has any questions. Um, I'm sure Lucy and Daria would be very happy to take, you know, uh, input. And thank you all for making the time to join in as well. Thank you. I'll uh, keep the call open for a few more seconds in case anybody wants to copy anything from the I chat. do have to run those, so, but I, you, think you can keep them. <laughs> Sorry, I've got another call. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye, indeed. Thank you very much. And have a good the rest of the day.